Hello, and my presentation is about low carbohydrate diets and the pros and cons of the diet. <coughs> to begin, a low carbohydrate diet is when you decrease the amount of carbohydrates that you consume from your daily intake and increase protein intake. Now, there are a few pros and cons to each uh, um, of these low carbohydrate diets. Some of the pros are that it has been shown to help out with certain types of diseases such as heart disease, hypertension, um, cardiovas cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. <coughs> it also has been shown to help with um, losing weight because the body um, is trying to use other forms of energy instead of carbohydrates. Um, According to some of the research that I have found, and I quote, according to the American Heart Association nutrition community, some popular high protein, low carbohydrate diets limit carbohydrates to 10 to 20 grams a day, which is one fifth of the minimum 100 grams a day that is necessary to prevent loss of lean muscle tissue. Um, now, <coughs> the article that I'm using here says that this is an incorrect statement, and I quote, since catabolism of lean body mass is reduced by ketone bodies, which and probably explains the preservation of lean tissue observed during very low carbohydrate diets. Um, so most of the articles that I have come uh, around to finding have been in support of low carbohydrate diets, um, saying that going and <coughs> When the body uses ketones for energy instead of carbohydrates, it's actually not um, as harmful as many other exercise um, experts and dietitians have stated in the past. Mm. Um. There is much controversy with either statement that uh, uh, pros and cons. Uh, for example, and I quote from another article that I found, um, much of the controversy in the study of low carbohydrate diets stem from a lack of clear definition. The rationale of carbohydrate restriction is that in response to lower glucose availability, changes in insulin and glycogen concentrations will direct the body away from fat storage and toward fat oxidation. There's a suggestion of a threshold effect which has led to the clinical recommendation of a very low concentration of carbohydrates in the early stages of popular diets. This typically leads to the presence of measurable ketones in the urine and has re been referred to as a very low carbohydrate ke ketogenic diet or low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. Potent metabolic effects are seen with such diets, but beyond the threshold response, there appears to be a continuous response to carbohydrate reduction. The nutritional intake of less than 200 grams of carbohydrates a day has been called an LCD, which is low carbohydrate diet. Most experts would not consider that to provide the metabolic changes associated with an LCKD. We suggest that LCD refers to a carbohydrate intake in a range of 50 to 100 grams, 50 to 150 grams a day, which is about the level of generation of urinary ketones for most people. So what this is saying is it's defining a low carbohydrate diet, and there's two different versions. <coughs> that low carbohydrate diets. Um, seem to be around the 50 to 150 gram a day and low carbohydrate ketogenic diets seem to be around 20 to 50 grams per day. Um, so now let's discuss some of the changes that the body goes through um, when the body restricts carbohydrates. Um, and I'm quoting from an article. Um, a review outlined the way in which a marked reduction in carbohydrate intake leads to a general change in metabolism from a glucocentric to an uh, adipocentric metabolism. The main fuel source become fatty acids, glucose-dependent tissues, blood cells, retina, lens, and renal medulla receive glucose through glucogenesis and glycogenolysis. Um, the metabolic state experienced by a person who is following an LCKD is often compared with a condition of starvation. The main similarities in metabolism between LCDs and starvation are that there is no for a little or little intake of exogenous carbohydrate and that there is a shift from the use of glucose of fuel towards that of fatty acids and ketones as fuel. Now, some other researchers have stated that ketosis is <coughs> that ketosis is not um, 
harmful for humans. Um, and I quote, however, it is clear that ketosis is not harmful except in high level C and type 1 diabetes. Also, the need to provide glucose above minimal means is exactly what has never been demonstrated. Indeed, the National Research Council has not established recommended dairy dietary allowance for carbohydrates, probably because the human body can adapt to a carbohydrate free diet and manufacture the glucose it needs. Um, nevertheless, some nutritionists contend that the carbohydrate is an essential nutrient. So, there's many different varying factors, um, and I'm going to take a stance. I think that carbohydrates are an extremely invaluable important part of our diet and I also think that um, from the research that I've done uh, carbohydrates help fuel the body uh, whether it's with extraneous, extraneous ex exercise or through getting throughout the day and even from my own experience from reducing carbohydrate intake um, I feel way worse when I don't have a high quality source of carbohydrates in my diet <coughs> the body going into ketosis and using up proteins as its few main fuel source can lead to detrimental problems. Um, and I think that there needs to be more research on low carbohydrate diets um, before people j jump into them. I think that with any diet, somebody needs to be responsible and be under the supervision of a doctor. And I think that low carbohydrate diets can be dangerous for the human body in terms of, um, as that article has stated, that they're, they mimic the effects of starvation. So if one was to follow a low carbohydrate and ketogenic diet, um, it's basically like starving your body. And you can, in fact, lose lean muscle tissue. Um, if you're trying to build up muscle and gain muscle. So um, in conclusion, I think that there are varying arguments for both low carbohydrate diets and non low carbohydrate diets. But I think in the end, um, between 50 and 150 grams a day, um, if not up to 200 grams a day, it would be healthy and suffice uh, for carbohydrate intake because it is such a vital important as a macronutrient uh, to our diet. Thank you very much.